In this video, we're going to learn about weighted least squares. And here the cost function is very similar to ordinary least squares. So we have j equals the sum going from i equals 1 to the length of our data set of yi minus theta transpose xi squared. But we're going to also multiply it by some weighting factor wi. And this is going to allow us to do the very same job of ordinary least squares. That is try to minimize the sum of all of these square offsets, except that we can this time do it in an unfair way. So for example, we can give this point, that point, and this point more weight than all the others. And in this case, our hyperplane would tend to be closer to them whenever we get our FET. Now, one scenario in which this can prove to be very useful is if our data set does not follow a linear trend. Here, if we try applying ordinary least squares, we might end up with a fit that looks like that, which is a very terrible fit. Because what the data set originally follows might be something that looks like that. And you can in fact achieve this if you're using a neural network. But we're going to forget about neural networks for now and see how can weighted least squares help us overcome this. So we know that that curve that looks like that can maybe be approximated by a bunch of straight lines that look like this, right? And based on this knowledge, how about assigning the weight to be dependent on the prediction point? So if you're trying to predict something right here, we're going to give high weights to all points that are in the neighborhood and low weights to all of the far away points and then end up with a straight line that looks like this one. If you're trying to find a prediction right here, then the same applies. We're going to give a high weight to these points and low weight to all others and end up with a straight line that looks like this one, which is a very fair approximation to that nonlinear curve. So mathematically, we might be looking for a weight that approaches zero for far away points and approaches one if the point is close enough. And a good way to do this is to use the radial basis function. So here wi is going to be equal to e to the negative power of x minus xi squared over 2 tau squared. If these two are far away from each other, then we're going to get a big number right here and you know, the curve for e to the power of negative x looks like that. So the bigger your power, the closer you approach zero. Meanwhile, if these two are so similar, so they're too close to each other, then you're going to get a small number. So that might be approaching e to the negative power of zero, which actually approaches one. And tau here is just a mercy factor. The higher your tau is, the more mercy you give to far away points 